I'm good, man. I'm not going to say what you want me to say, and I'm not going to say what the MMA <laughs> fans want me to say. So it is what it is. Well, I, I, I truly, uh, I, I, I just want your opinion. I, I don't want you to say anything. Who won this damn fight, though, Sean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Tyson Fury won the fight. It is what it is, you know? Um, but I will say this, you know, there's no true uh, map in terms of how you uh, score a, a boxing match, you know? And I did a show earlier. Uh, shout out to Pro Box TV. You guys should watch that show. It's a news channel that's built just for boxing, you know? Right. And the, and, the, and what, we, what we all determined was even if that knockdown had happened late in the fight, it still would not have earned Ngannou the victory. The fact of the matter is, outside of the knockdown and maybe one or two other rounds, there were a handful of rounds that Tyson Fury just flat out won, had the busy jab, and of course, one of the one of the many things we expected that actually showed up, and, and beyond that, you know, uh, him just being a boxer, knowing how to pace himself through a 10-12 round fight, he won the fight. It is what it is, you know. Nonetheless, Ngannou showed himself, man, and he showed himself in a big way. Yeah, is that the issue, Sean, that I think a lot of fans will look at these fights in the totality and they're not scoring round by round and they say, okay, biggest moment of the fight belonged to Francis. We expected this to be complete domination on Tyson's part and, and those factors together have led people to say that Francis won the fight. Sure, I mean, and, and, I'll, and I'll be completely honest and candid with you guys. Judges are told when you score one round, you have to leave that round behind and score each round based on what happens in those in those rounds. People psychologically are not trained to see a knockdown and say, "Well, that was in the third round." You know how else? How, how's the rest of this fight playing? A lot of people hold on to the knockdown, as do a lot of ref, uh, judges as well. Right. So I, I do have to be, but that's how it's supposed to be. The judge is supposed to wipe their, the, the slate clean and start each round fresh and new as if the knockdown never happened, as if a point was never deducted and things things of that nature, you know. But that is the nature of scoring a boxing match, you know. When you see um, no one really truly dominate an entire fight, but you see a knockdown, you're like, well, that guy had that one. He, he, he scored the knockdown. Unfortunately, it's not the case. And unfortunately, even though Ngannou showed himself again to be very strong, um, showed himself to be prepared for this fight. He also showed that he does not have enough boxing mechanics to win enough rounds to beat Tyson Fury. I spoke with Shakur Stevenson about the fight, and he admittedly only saw about half of uh, the fight. He saw about five rounds, saw the highlights as well. He believed that Tyson, despite him saying he trained for three months for the fight, he believed that he came in didn't train, possibly out of shape. What did you see as somebody who has watched Tyson Fury fight so many times? Yeah, and, I, and, and I, I'm not ashamed to plug things, okay? So Pro Box TV, yet again, and then also the Portaway Podcast. I just want everybody to, to know where you can find me saying these kinds of things. On the, on the, on the Pro Box TV, uh, I, I said it's like a, a shooter shooting at the target. If, if their gun is off, a.k.a. these, if they're off, what what a what a guy what, what someone will do is they'll just fine tune that gun, and that's what training camp is for. Training camp is for you to make sure that those guns are right. That way, in in real action, you're on, you're hitting the target and you're throwing the punches correctly with the right delivery. Tyson Fury's punches were wide. Tyson Tyson Fury's punches, some of them were just slow. Uh, most of them were off target. Those are all signs that even though he was in an eight, ten week camp, whatever he says he was, he didn't fine tune because on fight night he was very off. And when when a fighter is very off, you you can pinpoint and say, well, how could he have been so off? You sometimes fighters are off if the, if the the opposition is like doing a bunch of like different moves that you're not prepared for. We didn't get any of that from Nganu. He was right there in his face, ready to box. You know. Why was Tyson Fury off? Because he didn't do a, a lot of things correctly in camp. And you can see it. Fighters who, who, have, who have trained eight, ten weeks, we know what we're looking at. When you are a fighter of his magnitude and you're off, it's because of training. Yeah, because, Sean, I think a lot of people, they watch that fight and, uh, 
you know, I remember we posted a clip a day or two before the fight. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, Francis has zero chance to win this fight. I said that. I mean, everyone that I heard said there was no chance that he could win this fight. And people can't wrap their head around the fact that, that Tyson could stand in there with Deontay Wilder three times, arguably win all three fights, that he could stand in there and beat Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, D- Dilling, I mean, all the people, the great heavyweights that he's fought. I mean, how you you don't think though that what you saw with Francis that he he doesn't have the the level of skill required to not fight MMA but actually to be um, a top level heavyweight boxer? We would hundred percent have to credit Francis Ngannou for the way he showed up, for the way he prepared, and then also for the way he operated on fight night. The only X against Francis Ngannou at the moment is his experience in a 10 or 12 round fight even eight rounds and yeah even eight rounds i can't say six i can't say four fours and sixes this one speed it's one tempo you don't have to learn a pace right eight ten twelve rounds his lack of experience showed because there were rounds where he sent and this essentially essentially did zero to win those rounds and so a lot of that you can talk about his preparation moving forward. If he's able to find a pace, he's going to get some some heavyweight fighters some trouble because he's big enough to fight there. He showed that he's strong enough to fight there. And the kid and the guy is athletic. He's got skills. I didn't know Francis had this this these kind of skills. Right. And he brought it to a guy who just wasn't as prepared as he was. Now I'll say this is um, there's a there were a lot of components that I think we just rushed under the rug because we just didn't we didn't think that that, that everybody's saying there's no way Francis Ngannou sticks in the ring for right. Tyson Fury. You talk about everything that Tyson Fury has done in the past but the one thing we did not discuss or expect was him to be not prepared for him not to be prepared for this fight. Again, I hate, I don't want to take anything from Francis Ngannou but Tyson Fury, he underperformed, and he he was he wasn't prepared for this fight. Talk to me about that, Sean, because I I think if you're not a boxer, you don't realize. I mean, what's the you know I think people assume Tyson Fury he can fight, he can roll out of bed and fight, but but what's the difference between somebody who who's trained and is trained properly versus somebody who is a great fighter but is not trained and and maybe they didn't take it seriously because they're sure, fighting because. I, I guarantee you, people are going to argue me and think that I'm making excuses for, for Tyson. I'm not whatsoever. And again, like, I want to credit Francis as much as possible. Yeah. But but everybody's going to say, well, he went 10 rounds. How could he not be prepared? Guess what? He's a fighter. He's a boxer. That's right. what we do. Right. Those are the things that we can actually roll out of bed and do. And right. that's why training camp is so important. Because we can roll out of bed and do 10 rounds. But how we roll out of bed and prepare determines how we're going to perform and look in those 10 rounds. And that's what I mean when I say you can tell that there were a lot of things he left at the gym when his accuracy is off, when his speed is off, when he doesn't have that bounce in and out rhythm. When you don't see that in and out rhythm that he has, it's because he knows he can't do it. Why isn't he doing it? Because he didn't do it in training camp. And that's those are the kinds of things that we have learned to expect from Tyson Fury. When you break this fight down, there's certain things we don't see against, uh, 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 see from Tyson in this fight. You, when you ask yourself why, you say because of training. Simple as that. Two quick ones uh, for you, Sean. Can uh, Francis Ngannou be made into a guy who is a legit title threat at heavyweight in, in boxing? Yeah, you know what the, what was said earlier was that he's 37 years old. He doesn't have a lot of time. Right. I disagree with that. I think that boxers, fighters in general, are in their prime closer to 33 to 35, 36, 37, depending on who you are. And then another thing that is, it's not scientifically proven, but it's something that's said in the boxing world. Heavyweights age slower than any other weight class. So at 37 to 40, a heavyweight is actually in their prime. I think he, I think Francis Ngannou has time to polish his skills, to de- to devote his his time one hundred percent to boxing and make some noise in the boxing ring. Man, I'm looking forward to what he does next. I think it's time for him to make some real money. Yeah, yeah. remarkable. And uh, speaking of real money, if this happens, I, I think that'll be real money. Do you want to see a rematch? 
I do. I want to see a rematch. I kind of want to see it right away, but the other side of that is I like to see Francis sharpen himself. I like to see him do eight rounds in eight rounds against two other competitors just to, just for him to get that in ring in action learning on the job experience and then go right back after Tyson Fury. Hopefully Tyson's got his mind right and we'll get a real right and we'll get a real fight. This is what makes the sport so great in this sports in general, right, Sean? Because you're yeah. like, there's no way that uh, Tyson could lose this fight, and not that he did lose, but no way it's going to be close. And yeah, shocking. This is what this is why why people love boxing, man. Is yeah. you always have the puncher's chance, and then there's always the chance of somebody being more prepared and doing the unexpected. That's what we got on on, on Saturday night.